Um, so yeah, good afternoon everyone. Um, thanks for joining me and welcome to our fifth edition of Albumworks Presents, part of our ongoing live webinar series. My name is Naomi and I'm a member of our customer service team here in Melbourne. Um, hopefully everyone had a great Easter and Passover or whatever other religion they, they have. By now you're probably all well and truly stuck into making your photo books. Um, if not, now's the perfect time to start if you're getting bored or sick of cleaning the house. Um, we want this to be an interactive session, so please feel free to ask questions along the way. To ask a question, you should see the webinar control panel on the right hand side of your screen if you're working on a computer. You can type your question into this dialog box and send it. If you're tuning in, <coughs> excuse me, on a phone <coughs> or a tablet, um, you should see a question mark at the top right of your screen, which you can press to type a question. Or make time at the end to answer your questions. In this series, I'm working with the downloadable editor on a Windows computer. The Mac version of the editor is the same, so Mac users will be able to follow along as well. Today's webinar should run for about 10 to 15 minutes, and today's topic is advanced editing in the downloadable editor. Um, so I'll look at working with multiple images on a page, resizing images while constraining proportions, aligning and spacing multiple images, fitting images to the page or the spread, etc., and using the ruler. All right, let's get started. So I'm going to bring up a page. Um, I've opened up a, a, a blank book um, and I've added a few photos to the left-hand column. Um, hopefully everyone can see my screen. Now, um, the first thing I was gonna look at is um, working with multiple images on a page. Uh, so I'll add, Let's just add, say, four images to the page here. I'm not putting any page styles on at the moment. And we're going to create our own. Um, there we go. So I've got four images. I've chosen four landscape ones just to make it easy. Um, so usually you might just be working with one specific photo. To highlight a single photo on a page um, to, to apply any features to it uh, or enhancements, you click on one photo and you'll see little blue dots around the edges of that photo. If you want to highlight more than one photo, hold down your shift key and while you're holding it down, click on the other photos that you want to work with. So I'm clicking on these ones and see how they've all got the blue dots around the corners. That means they're all highlighted and whatever um, enhancements or features I apply will apply to all four. Um, this can be really useful, for example, if you want to add a border to uh, a whole page full of photos. So on the right hand side here, I can add a border, just so you can see it a bit clearly, I'll just make it a bit bigger. So I've just added a border and it's applied it to all four photos. Say I change my mind, I can get rid of the border, I might decide to add a drop shadow instead, and the drop shadow applies to all four photos. Um, this can also be useful if you want to auto enhance all the photos on the page. Um, auto enhance is a really good feature that um, it basically makes your photos as good as they can be for printing. Uh, and it's just this box here uh, on the right hand side, auto enhance. Uh, you probably won't see much change on these particular photos because they're, um, they're professional <laughs> photos and so they're already uh, looking really good. All right, so now that you know how to um, to highlight more than one photo on a page, the next thing, um, you might want to resize all these photos at the same time. I'm just gonna take that off. I'm just gonna take off the drop shadow as well, just to make it a bit easier. Um, so I wanna resize these photos. They're a bit small on the page. Um, to re, if you just, click on, sorry, if you click and drag, say the bottom circle to resize them, notice how they all get longer at the bottom edge. So they're becoming a square shape rather than the rectangular shape that they started at. Um, so that you're losing part of your photos being cropped off. We don't really want that to happen. 
So I'll just undo what I did by clicking on the undo button. When I resize, if I hold down the shift key and then drag any of the dots, it resizes in the same proportions as the photo was to begin with. Um, so I don't lose that landscape sh um, shape. It doesn't become a square and I haven't lost any of the content in my photo. Um, so hold down shift while resizing. Um, the other thing, the next thing I was going to talk about was aligning your photos and spacing them um, evenly. So aligning used to be a lot trickier, but we now have quite a nice little feature in the editor where it shows you if photos are aligned. So say I'll put this photo here and I want to align this photo um, with it. See how when I've moved it, there's a green line along the bottom edge. That's telling me that the two photos are aligned at the bottom edge. Um, it should really do it at the top edge as well, but it's not for some reason. There you go, now it is. So they must, these photos are actually slightly different um, size. So anyway, I've aligned them at the top edge. Um, I can do the same with the elephant if I want to align it to the jellyfish. Um, see how you've got green vertical lines on the left, middle and right. That, sh that means it's aligned with the jellyfish on all edges. And same, I'll do that with the lions. At the moment, it's aligned with the elephant, but I also want to align it with the zebra. So I don't know why it changed. Sometimes it's a different colour. I think it's aligning. It's not exactly the same size photo, so that doesn't help. Um, but there you go. Now it's aligned on the left edge. So I've put them all um, there as aligned as they can, can be. Um, <laughs> The old fashioned way of aligning items was, and you can still use this, is you click on this one photo and then click on, um, hold down your sh shift key and click on the photo next to it. They're on the same um, horizontal level. You can then right click and choose align and then you can align the top edges or the bottom edges, whichever you prefer, and it'll, it'll make sure they're aligned. Um, the other thing you can do with aligning is you can you can space the items. I'm just going to highlight them all again, and I just want to make them a bit. I'm going to make them quite small. I've decided I might put. Um, oops, sorry. I'm just going to move one at a time. Actually, that's the other thing I was going to tell you. If you've highlighted all four photos and then you decide you don't want to move all four photos, um, just hold down Shift and click on the photo again and it'll unhighlight it. Um, so I've decided I might, um, I want to line these up down the bottom of the page quite small. So I'm going to highlight them all again and I want them to have even spacing between them. So if I right click and choose align space, um, then choose space items, left, left click, and I can space these items one from, from each other. So I want to click on, I've ticked here, this horizontal alignment because they're sitting horizontal, horizontally with each other. And I can choose how much disk space I want between them. Um, I might say I only want, I don't know, five millimetres between them. And I click OK. And it's made sure that they're all lined up and then I can put them wherever I want. I can have them on the page. They're nice and even now. And there's a five millimetre space between them all. Um, I might want to also add this image to the back of the page. Um, uh, uh, this is actually the next, <clears throat> excuse me, the next area, which is fitting a photo to a page. Um, <clears throat> so I want this photo to take up the entire page. To do that, there's a really easy way. You right click on the photo, left click on fit, and then left click on fit to page and it takes up the whole page. I can crop it if I don't like which bit's showing. Now, we've lost my other four photos. <clears throat> Why is that? Um, because the camel's in front of them. So we want to get our other photos back. Um, to do that, you right click, choose, um, sorry, arrange, and send. we're sending the camel to the back of the page. And that brings forward all the other, the four photos that I had there so I can see them all. Um, 
Right, then the other things you can do, um, you can fit a photo to a spread. Uh, let's, we'll just swap it with the elephant and I'll, sh I'll show you if I right click on this elephant and say fit, fit to spread, it goes to the double page. The only problem is my elephant is gonna be lost in the binding, so I'm gonna lose his head. So it's probably not a good photo to put on a spread. I might want to change it. I'm going to swap it with the zebras because it's a better photo for that um, and see how my zebras aren't cut off. Um, they're not stuck in the binding area. So sometimes it's a matter of choosing the right photo to, to spread to the page. Um, the other thing that can happen sometimes is, I'll just move that out of my way. Um, you might have put a photo on the page and you might have okay, accidentally you've changed the shape. Oh no, part of my image is missing. How do I get that back? Well, the easiest way to get it back is to right click on the photo, left click on fit, and then you want to fit the box to the picture. So the box that it is in will fit to the, the picture rather than vice versa. Click that and it's back. And then I can hold down shift to resize it if I want to make it smaller or bigger. Uh, so that's pretty much, yeah, fitting images to the page, aligning uh, photos with each other. Um, the last thing I was going to talk about is the ruler. So, look, I don't use it personally myself, um, but if you're very particular about how you want your images to appear on the page, there is a ruler feature in the program. You click on the view menu and then, oops, excuse me, and show rulers. And it'll bring up a ruler at the edges of your page. Um, it's in cent, uh, millimeters. So, um, so for example, from zero to 20, that's two centimeters or 20 millimeters. Um, this is a 12 by 12 square inch book, which is 30 centimeters. So you'll see the, the 30 mark or 300 mil mark is where the spine, where the binding is. Um, this means if you want to put a photo in a specific position, like you want, might want to put it on the two centimetre mark, you can you can actually place it exactly where you want it on the page. Um, the other thing useful, this is with rulers, but also if you want to make your photos a specific size, um, over here on the right hand side, you've got this ruler button at the top. This shows you the layout of your page. So the, um, the top position is showing you the position that this photo is on the page and I haven't even aligned it properly with the 20 centimetre mark. I'm gonna try and move it a bit. It's a bit fiddly. I don't like using it too much myself. Let's see if I can move it slightly. Nah, it's a bit tricky. If, if it doesn't go exactly where I want it, I can actually type in a figure here, 20, I want it the 20 mark and it's now exactly on 20. Um, the next uh, buttons down here is, is the size. So this is the size of the actual image, how it's gonna print. So at the moment, it is going to be um, 766 mil, which is, uh, sorry, excuse my, it's about, it's about seven, no, that's, yeah, about seven centimeters is the width. 7.6 7 centimetres and the height is 11.5 centimetres roughly. So that's the exact size it's going to print on your page. If you want to, you can tell, you can actually say what size you want. So um, back in the days we printed um, photos, a normal size print would be 10 by 15 centimetres. Uh, so if I want to make it exactly that, I can say 10, it's actually in mils, so I'm going to say 100 by 150 and then hit enter. And that's the exact size it's gonna print um, on the page is, and, and that's when you get the book back, it will be exactly the, that, that size. So it's useful if you want to make your photos all exactly the same size. Um, um, yeah, so that's pretty much that. Uh, I think that's pretty much it for today. So I'll just have a quick check if you don't mind waiting to see if we've got any questions. If you have any questions, now is a really good time to write them in there. 
So far, no. We'll just give it one more minute to see if anyone has any queries. I was going to say also if, if you um, when I talked about highlighting more than one photo on the page you can also do it by hitting control A on your keyboard control all um, when I do that it highlights everything on that double page spread on a Mac it would be um, command A would do the same thing just so you know Okay, someone's asking if we have a written manual. Um, not at the moment, no we don't, but we do have a lot of video tutorials on our website. If you go to our FAQs um, on our website at the bottom, there's tutorials that you can look at and most of them are about one or two minutes and teach you um, a range of different features that you can do with the editor. Uh, all right, it doesn't look like we have any other queries. So I'm just going to go back and recap what we've talked about. Um, so basically we've looked at how to uh, work with multiple images at a time, how to resize an image while constraining proportions, how to align and space multiple items on the page, um, using the fit to page and fit to spread tool and using the ruler in the editor. So my usual speech before we go, don't forget you're welcome to call our customer service team if you need any assistance. We're here Monday to Friday, 9am until 5.30pm Melbourne time. Our phone number is 1300 553 448. You can also reach us by email, which is service at albumworks.com.au or you can, call, you can talk to us on live chat from our website. You can also head to our website at www.albumworks.com.au to view our Mother's Day promotion to save on your next order, as well as enter our Instagram competition. Also, if you want to watch our previous webinars, um, click on, on the home page, click on the webinars and tutorials link, and that will take you to a page that lists all the webinars that have already been done. And today's one will get put there as well. Uh, it's business as usual for our production team. We're still here making your photo products. There might be a slight delay in delivery, um, which you can read about on our website. So thanks again for joining us and looking forward to having you here again for our next webinar. Um, I think next we'll start um, looking at different themes that you can use to make your photo books and designing beautiful albums. In the meantime, have fun creating your photo books. Bye-bye.